Hey guys, so we've got the uh, feather here today, same blade as yesterday, and today is going to be use number 55 off that. We're going to put it in this Fat Boy vintage Gillette razor. I really like it, and I'll be able to tweak it up since the feather's got a bunch of uses on it. I'll be able to tweak it up a little bit than my normal range uh, to accommodate for the smoothness and the worn uh, edge. Uh, this is the Smug Owners Club Taj, Taj Ore Brush. It's only been used four or five times, and uh, I've had it soaking in water for, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. And then the uh, soap is Williams Mug Soap, and this frothy stuff is left over from yesterday. I mixed it, for, I, I loaded for such a long time. Uh, relatively speaking, it was a little over three minutes because I was, uh, I put a lot of water in it and I was waiting for that water to uh, thicken up a little bit. And it did turn into a slurry, a, a nice slurry that didn't dissipate or anything like that. But I ended up having to add so much water to it. I never quite got it to where I wanted. So I'm gonna reduce those ratios a little bit and we'll see what we get. Other than that, uh, the blade is the same and the soap is the same and the brush is the same as yesterday. So I didn't want to keep, I wanted to keep my, uh, I wanted to keep the brush and soap especially the same variables. Now this is my feather blade and here is the uh, little mark I put on it um, to show you that it's the same blade that I've used a bunch of times. Uh, I have it set on a six. I usually like it set a little lower like maybe a three or something for just a nice smooth but still efficient shave. Uh, but we're going to go a little higher today. Let's just see what happens. I may adjust on the fly. Um, matter of fact, let's, uh, let me turn it down to five. And uh, we'll start there. We won't assume it's too aggressive. Let's get my face a little wet. Yesterday, a little bit of tugging with the um, what razor did I use yesterday? I uh, can't remember. Oh well. Um, and so I'm not using it uh, again with this blade for now. Uh, I've got this Triumph, a small two ounce amount that they do for their seasonal releases, like on Black Friday, that sort of thing. I like it a lot. Okay, so we're going to take the brush. I'm going to shake out most of the water, the freestanding water. Now I put four teaspoons of water in this several minutes ago. It's had a lot, I had to, I was interrupted, so it's had a little bit longer to soak than I might normally do. So my, my stirring and loading the other day, uh, yesterday was a little over three minutes. So let's just do it for one minute this time. And, and I have half the water, four teaspoons instead of eight yesterday. I don't know why I did eight. It just, uh, it's kind of crazy. All right. So we'll start at the 40 mark. There we go. Not a lot of pressure, just kind of medium. And this is a young boar brush. And so he, he does, he's got enough backbone to do well. So um, we started at 40 and I want to go for a minute. Okay. And I was really happy with the lather. And so the, uh, this may be a, another great way to lather Williams. This is a Hazel Atlas vintage mug. You'll see a few of those on eBay, especially with a uh, a set of gear, like a, a straight, a couple of uh, doubles, some vintage blades, and then a, a mug like this. Two more seconds now, and we'll have a minute of loading. And there we go. Now, let's show you what it looks like. It's very wet, very kind of soupy, kind of just that light. Uh, we even got a big old wet bubble right there. Yeah, there you go. You can see some of it falling on the back. Yeah, you can see you can see how wet it is. 
and I'm just going to start using it uh, like a, uh, a face lather. We'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, now, yesterday it was it was so wet that it just dripped all over my shirt, and that maybe you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of rake a little bit of this off into the mug there. See the sides of the brush aren't as uh, much, and let's just see if maybe. Well, see there you go. It starts going. So maybe four ounces of water into the puck is still a little bit much. But, you know, I had to add so much water back in yesterday. I was just, I didn't want to come down on the water amount too much. I had to add so much yesterday that I wanted to reduce it by a significant amount, but I also didn't, didn't want to go too far. Because adding water back in to a to this kind of thing is kind of tedious to me. Well, this is a nice creamy lather from Williams, and there's tons of people who don't think it can be done, and this method is really pretty simple. So I'll definitely reduce the water even more. Maybe just two teaspoons. So, cause you know, we lost a lot of water. Now it's starting to firm up a little bit in some places. I don't really like it when a lather's flying around quite this much. Let's see, am I am I kind of on my way to a a really nice Williams lather or is this a little temperamental? Is this loose in spots which is causing the flyaways? And then, you know, needs water in other spots. Just have to kind of wait and see. I mean, it's tremendously slick. It's great. Yeah. Uh, dealing with just a day of, gro of growth. Kind of normal. Now let's take my syringe and start adding back water a little bit. Let's just see what the lather turns into, if it changes very much. I think I loaded too much again. Probably needed to load even less since it, the water had a chance to sit on the soap for longer than I kind of had planned on it. You can see I have I just have tons of lather available to me here. If you want it kind of on the thicker side, Williams can do that. Exhibit A. Okay. Fat boy, can you handle the old feather, used feather? Oh, now that is good. This is the guy right here. Comfortable, not tugging. I mean, just a tiny bit. Now, my Nasset blade that I've put through so many shaves It, 
is one that I have not rotated the blade. I have not flipped it in any way. I'm purposefully, just for grins, always inserting the blade the same side up. And so I've shaved 220 times with that blade in the same position, same orientation. The feather here, kind of my uh, next marathon blade that's got a lot of uses on it. And I'm just kind of random on that one. Sometimes I put it in one way, sometimes the other. All right. Tons of lather. Let me uh, rinse off here. All right. Here's that awesomeness that was on the side of the brush. Left my face a little wet. This brush may not need to be refreshed. I may not have to go back to the mug. It's a nice big knot. And this is the owner's club. And there are lots of people who really like this brush. And for good reason. It's already very nice and it's very young. If you don't know already, uh, boars do have a break-in period where they're kind of ornery for the first maybe one, two, three weeks. Just depends on the brush. And they, sometimes you have to go back to the puck and load up more soap before every pass. Normally you just do it before the first pass. But with all the Samogs and Zeniths that I've broken in, that just lasts uh, just a couple weeks, if that. So it's not really a big deal, and it's really kind of cool to, to watch it change and grow as the tips split, as the splay opens up. Now this brush here, this owner's club is a splay monster. I have seen pictures of people's owner's club that was well broken in and well used. And it has a huge splay. Now I'm curious because, see, I've got this goatee. I don't really need a big splaying brush, so um, I may be enjoying the owner's club until it gets all big, but one of the things you can do is put an O-ring at the base of the knot. That rings in the splay a little bit, so that's a possibility. Again, I have overloaded this soap. Getting plenty of face massage time with with this shave. And I, I do look at that awesome lather that's available. Okay. Cross grain now. You know what I bet I could do is bring the I'm going to bring the setting down a little bit now that we've taken off that first pass. Don't need it to be quite so aggressive. So I am going to take it down to a four. Some people with their adjustables like to increase the exposure, increase the roughness, aggression setting. I think most people don't. I think most people diet, dial it back as they go. Look at that. Awesome lather just kind of sticking around. Hanging out in the goatee. And this is some good slick lather. Williams can compete with anybody in terms of slickness. 
This feels great on my face. Luxury. Doesn't really have much other than a mild soapy scent. But in terms of texture, slickness, this lather right here is quite amazing and easily competes. And I would wager there are some, you know, $20, $30 soaps that in terms of pure performance, this guy will beat them out. All right, uh, let's rinse. Now, when you first kind of unwrap a, a puck of Williams, you first unbox it and use it for the first time, it's, that citronella scent is strong, but it does dissipate, especially if you put it in a mug and leave it uncovered. And it just takes a day or two to have the scent really back off. So don't let that be a detractor for you. As I was rinsing this uh, most recent pass off, I, I believe I nailed the lather consistency because the as I put water on my face and was wiping the kind of old lather away, it didn't really feel slimy or, or activated by the water as much as it does when it's too thick, you know? And so it, it almost felt like uh, it was contributing a little bit to the to the soap that was on my face, but then the rinsing process did begin. Sometimes when it's too thick, you have this thick film of the, the soap, the lather on your face, and it takes a while to work that off. And that wasn't the case here, so I believe my consistency here is really pretty good. And see, this lather's not dissipating. It's not going anywhere. That's a common thing that people say about Williams and it, it is something that people say when they haven't dialed in Williams properly. And this was really quite easy. I'm going to get the measurements down first before I kind of go talking to people about it so I could give them some you know good solid details. But uh, lather feels great and when it's got enough water Williams will, won't dry your face out as much. Um, I mean, unless you've got really, really dry skin, then it's probably not the soap for you. But for your average skin person, one of the bad parts about using it when it's too underhydrated, when it's too dry, is that, that drying feeling and you feel like, man, that's just a drying soap. No, it's not. You, you didn't put enough water in it. And comfortable. Right now, I'm getting a great shave. The closeness is going to be there. It was there yesterday. I have no reason to think that it won't be there today. And so people who throw their feather away after three uses saying that it's dull. Well... That's kind of a subjective thing, isn't it? And it's not actually dull. It'll still cut like crazy. All right. That part, it's objective. But maybe it's, it bothers them. Maybe it tugs at them a little bit. Maybe, especially if their lather is a little bit on the dry side, then you, you don't have quite the slickness and protection uh, to, to be able to, you know, handle... A feather that's you know 20 uses old all right but got this wonderful sweet spot when i do splashes after these kinds of shaves it i rarely get stings it's just smooth and wonderful so i did a rinse there oh that is a nice cut man the fat boy is my guy for this feather for a good while now i think um I never went back and got any more lather from the mug. It all pretty much was was from that first that first even when I had raked the side stuff off. And so I've still got mostly this uh slurry in here, this super wet stuff. Oh, but it is slick. Man, Williams. Well, you know what? If you're in a place where you think not many of us 
only have a few soaps or only have one soap. Many of us have made many purchases and have several soaps on hand. And so this uh, coronavirus kind of quarantine thing that's going on, uh, you know, you can still get to the grocery store. I've got one grocery store that I know of that carries Williams. And so uh, if you have run out of your home supply during this uh, ordeal, then maybe give Williams a try. And here's one way to do it. Uh, so next time, so this was two teaspoons of water onto the puck. Let it sit for a while. Uh, now, normally I would just let it sit for however long it took me to put my gear together. That's a very practical amount of time. And then I would change my load time based on that. Today was a little bit longer because of my interruptions. But uh, so what I did today was two teaspoons of water. Um, no, I did four because I did half, yeah, I did half of what I did yesterday, and that was still too much, all that soppiness, you know, in the beginning, so I can dial it back down to two, dial it down to two for tomorrow, and load time, I can probably back that off, instead of a full minute, maybe switch it down to 30 seconds, see what happens, so two teaspoons of water, 30 seconds of, uh, stir time in the water mug kind of thing and then go to the face and see what happens man i think i'm really on to a good williams technique uh, and for some people williams is a cheap soap that's available locally they don't have to pay shipping because it's at their grocery store and and so that could really help people save money uh, college students and other folks who are uh, you know just on really tight budgets so i'm proud to be able to bring something that's less labor intensive. My previous uh, bowl method um, was was just a uh, you know add water to it, mix it up, keep adding water slowly, you know that sort of thing until the lather works up. And it takes quite a bit of stirring to mix past those bubbles in the beginning, that airy, bubbly, thin looking stuff. You just gotta mix past it. Well, that's a lot of work. So if I can come up with something a little easier, that'd be great. All right, well, let's put on some of this Triumph from Sterling. And I'll clean my, clean my gear up. Sterling, I don't know if they use a lot of oils, a lot of the uh, essential and fragrance oils. I don't know if that's what causes my uh, skin to react a little bit if I put it on right after the shave. Or if it's alcohol content, I don't know which one it is. There are definitely other alcohol splashes that don't bother me as much as Sterling does. Uh, but so I don't know which part it is. But uh, I usually am better off waiting an hour. Let my I guess maybe it lets my skin heal a little bit, uh, recover a little bit, not be quite as uh, tender and, and uh, susceptible, if you will. Oh, yeah. That's a good scent. I like that. Now, the uh, stinging now, the kind of burning, irritating sensation because of the oils or whatever, it's gone now. So it just takes a minute or two to, to go away. It will leave a little bit of redness sometimes. I can mitigate that by throwing on a little bit of witch hazel, uh, Thayer's or something like that, uh, right before the splash. But I just didn't do that today. And just to track as this Smoke Owners Club opens up more and more each time. I'll be able to go back and look at old videos and see how it started out because I've i seen them to where they really crank over uh, quite a bit. Because see, what's going to happen is these tips are going to split more and more. When it's dry, it's easier to see because when it's wet, sometimes the two tips, yeah, see, look, there's multiple tips going on with that strand right there. Uh, they'll separate. And I think what happens is the tips will actually, uh, it'll turn into splitting the a lot of the, most of the shaft going down the bristle. And so then that basically doubles the amount of bristles that you see. And, and so then it just has, almost has no choice but to open up. And so he is going to just grow and grow. I can definitely see more, especially right here. Uh, guys hanging out on the side. All right. Put this guy away till tomorrow. We'll use him again just to keep things consistent so I can get a go. Oh, yeah. I was just looking down here at this Triumph. 
Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a good one. Okay, I think uh, everything's been cleaned and put away. So, just a little bit of sum up. A terrific shave. I'm just really impressed with this method to work with Williams. It's, I think it's simpler, it's less prone to error, and it's probably quicker. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. Now, I'll probably try to get a good face lather uh, routine going that I can rend recommend to people. But then I will switch it to a, a bowl. I'll do the same load, you know, where I'm loading in the, in the mug. But then I'll switch to the bowl to, to build up. Uh, four passes, five passes a lather to, for the shave. And because uh, that's just the way I prefer to do it. Uh, but we'll, we'll, take, we'll take it in steps. It's really fun playing around with this. All right, so loving the way the brush is moving along. It's not scritchy at all. It's a massagey feeling right now because it's young. And the blade did really well. The fat boy handled it much better than uh, many of the other options out there right now. So it must just have the right geometry uh, for this blade. And uh, happy with the soap uh, and the razor, like I said. So I think that's it. And there we go. I uh, sure hope there's been something here for you, something good for you today. Uh, this is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You take care. Uh, if you're in an area where uh, the coronavirus is really causing problems, uh, stay home. Uh, stay in as much as you can. Um, enjoy time with your family, your loved ones, your friends, uh, that sort of thing. Communicate uh, com via the computer, uh, you know, if you can. With uh, Google Hangouts is great. Skype is obviously great. There's a whole host of other uh, utilities. Uh, so keep yourself safe, all right? You take care. Good night.